All right. Good morning, everyone. Robert Masson here for our uh, eye mass uh, outpatient live surgery series. Uh, today we're in Orlando. Uh, we've got a 50-year-old avid tennis player who's presenting with uh, kind of a complete functional decline over about a two-year process. She had originally had a primary micro decompression left side for left-sided L5 radiculopathy uh, a couple of years ago. And the goal, again, was to continue activity, continue high-level tennis competition, typical performance standards, uh, really minimal back pain. Um, at that point, she already had the spondylolisthesis, grade one, with significant ligament change. She had a and hemilaminotomy, foraminotomy is that first procedure. It really worked quite well for about a year and a half, um, at which point she kind of fell off a cliff. Her gait became very, very forward postured, severe bilateral sciatica with gait and walking. Um, you know, she still played tennis through the whole thing and continued to be competitive, but normal day to day activity was actually harder than being on the court. Athletic position, neutral, flexed forward was comfortable. Bottom line, she's got a uh, grade one spondy L4-5. Uh, you can see the obvious central stenosis through uh, the 4-5 segment. Circumferential, when we go over to axial view, um, there's definitely a much bigger left-sided facet with hypertrophy, a lot of ligament hypertrophy, scar in at the decompression zone. She's got advanced degenerative changes within the facet complex, severe central stenosis, bilateral lateral stenosis. So we're going to do this case really focused on, you know, reduction of the uh, spondylolisthesis, but um, we're going to do basically screw placement first, facetectomy for inner body second as usual, really going to try to get vertical enhancement, some reduction, but ultimately, I'm going to do an internal laminectomy from the left side with a total facetectomy on the left to extend what, the facetectomy that we did for the inner body. But you know, rather than violate the posterior column and the posterior uh, dorsal interspinous ligaments and stuff, we're going to really focus on that internal laminectomy over to the right side and, and do the high and low foramen um, at 4-5 right. Uh, on the left, we're going to creep down to... Uh, Five one. Uh, let me get this back. When we uh, go down to five one, there's also some left lateral recess narrowing, and she does have some calf cramping and foot and ankle stuff. So I'm going to make sure we do a small focus for anatomy there. I don't want to destabilize it, but the focus uh, reconstruction wise is going to be four five. Um, anyway. Uh, we'll go into the next room. We'll start the intro process with marking and registration first, and then we'll move on to the case. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you. All right, we're in the operating room at our surgery center. Uh, we've got everything positioned, table, fluoro coming from the patient's right, micro coming from high left, small back table set up. Um, this is what I consider, as previously stated, the most important part of the case. This is where I'm sort of getting my three-dimensional representation of where I am in space relative to the back, relative to the zone, what the angles of attack are. And this is really where I set my own registration. So we're going to look at uh, pedicle view L4 and mark a planar line, pedicle view L5. Again, a planar line. I want to go down to foraminotomy, left L5S1. So we'll make sure I've got a zone for that. Um, basically, I see the angle of attack, where the incision is going to be to get those angles for those screws parallel to the end plate. All right, let's go AP. Back it up a little. OK, and now raise it. All right, so here's a nice AP view of L5. So I'm going to mark left pedicle, entry point, mark that here. Right pedicle, entry point, right there. We'll go to L4. Superior end plate view, so I've got a nice view of the pedicles. We've got a low lateral L4, entry point. 
low lateral L4 right entry point. So that gives us the relative splay for the screw map. This pedicle to pedicle to midline is the zone at 4.5 we're going to need to get fast attack to me, inner body, broad decompression. On AP view, you can see sort of the uh, excavated bone work done here from the original decompression. So there's already a significant decompression zone we're going to do. We're going to go from lateral to medial and managing the bone so that we creep into that dural margin. But uh, we'll make sure we get all that. All right, let's get fluoro out, we'll mark, and get going. excise this little scar and here we go Yeah, all right. Yeah, so as we drape, let me uh, just talk about a few things. You know, I'm a big fan of small setup, very, very precise, efficient, and meticulous sort of use of tools. I don't like a lot of extra clutter, um, particularly in an outpatient environment. The advantage is if you can get to your 99th percentile of tools and equipment and, and uh, all the instruments, it, it really helps the entire environment. So we really have a Mayo stand, and then a, one, one single back table. Um, one of the advantages of, you know, Moss 100 and Telix K as a pedicle screw and, and steerable cage, respectively, tool is the fact that it's one tray, one tray. You know, uh, most adequate, thorough uh, instrumentation trays can be five, seven, nine, ten, in some cases, 20 trays to get the full armamentarium. We've really got this thing organized to a level of extreme high performance, but single trays. And it just helps room setup. It helps efficiency, organization, prep. And particularly as you transcend from an inpatient environment with seemingly infinite storage capabilities to small, agile, nimble, lean, simplistic, outpatient environments, it's really important to have a, a very manageable, very, very competent and capable back table environment. And you know, so when we get into advanced system design, simplicity and lean, as we make further transitions into outpatient surgery, are going to be crucial to you know broad global management if we're going to pull it off systemically. So, so keep that in mind as you look at all this stuff. It, Everything's been designed to optimize that lean, simplistic component. All right, I'm going to, could I have add some? Excise the wound first. Got a little bit of a keloid on it, so we'll just get that part out. Thank you. All right, again, yeah, she's a little light. Yeah, so from here, my finger is going to basically be right on the dorsal spinous process, which in all my decompressions, I preserve dorsal interspinous zone. Um, so it's, I, I'm not going to have a big laminectomy defect. On the other hand, I'm going to have a very focused laminotomy defect that we have to protect as we dive down blind, but so my finger is going to be, you know, just in the dimple to offset right transfascial and left transfascial. And right is going to be virginal because we didn't do any right muscle manipulation. We did everything from an internal lamina perspective from the left. 
So that'll be a fresh plane on the right. We'll basically just strip and, and, and split the muscle to expose the lateral mass, L4 to L5, and that's it on the right. On the left, I'm going to extend it a little bit more. That's going to get me all the way down to 5.1 for the foraminotomy. But I don't want to plunge deep into that hemilaminotomy defect. I'll do that under the scope. Yeah, there's definitely uh, scar tissue here, as expected. All right, let's get scope in. Let me have a handheld. Okay, how are we on TV? I don't see the TV monitor on at all. Is it on? Because I need to adjust focus. Is focus good? Focus is good now? Yeah. All right, so you can see the scar tissue. I'm just dissecting down. Sort of leave a muscular cuff dorsally, but as I get deeper and deeper, I go more and more lateral. You know, I always do a fascial split that takes me a little higher than the skin split. That'll give me the opportunity to have less muscle retraction. Here's the uh, facet complex here. I go from lateral to medial and paint, maintaining vertical height so I don't get into that laminotomy defect. Just continue to clean that up. Continuing to plunge through the uh, fibrosis down to the facet complex. And that'll give me the exposure I need to go to the screw placement phase of the case. But this sort of lateral medial dissection is sort of cornerstone to the original foundation for how we built IMAS. It was originally built for revision and then eventually extrapolated to uh, everything. It just makes it easy to dissect around it and then put the screws in, which gives you an immediate three-dimensional representation with headless screws of where we are relative to all the different bone management that's been done previously. And it keeps you orient oriented, basically. All right. 
So that should be right. I've got a nice view left. I've got a good view. All right, let's get scope out for a sec. Now we're going to bring uh, fluoro in AP. And we'll go to screw placement. And yeah, I'm still in the uh, image guided fluoroscopic screw placement zone. Have not migrated to uh, nav robotics. Um, this is still easy and efficient and extremely, extremely accurate for me. And I still consider screw placement the easiest part of the case. So I'm not a big fan of uh, expensive enabling technologies for the easy part of the case. But obviously, those options are available should it be necessary. All right, we'll find a spot right at the pedicle map L5 right. Same exact thing, L5 left. Okay, we'll get our angle. Bone quality is actually outstanding. That's good news for her. So these taps are nice and sharp. I go straight tap to screw. Um, you know, as stated previously, the uh, accuracy early is key in this methodology. And uh, migrated a little. Let me get a better starter hole. Very solid bone. We'll go down, find the hole. The uh, tap is the active step, and it creates the trajectory, creates the path, screws the passenger. Like all eye mass sequences, the first step is the active step. The cage two follows the template. The screws follow the tap. All right, so that's L5. Let's go. To to L4, superior end plate view. Again, at the high construct, I go low lateral to avoid the articulating facet interface. They're right there on the right. Right there on the left. And good bone at four as well. As always, Wayne is uh, stimulating the, the tools in sequence just to get a general idea of whether there's any stimulation of the descending nerve root, sort of a EMG effect. 
Everything's quiet. We've got four twitches anesthetically. Right L4. Okay, get it in the starter hole. Right L4, left L4. Rotation four to five, and that shows there. That's a good view of our map. Let's go to lateral. And Wade, when you get a chance, when you're done with this, uh, come move the suction machine a little. Deeper in, if you could. Too close to me. Okay, slide the base out. Right there, release wag a little bit. Slide south a little bit more. A little more. Okay, right there. Okay, lock that. To reduce a little bit in prone position compared to uh, uh, the base isn't locked. Wait, hold on. No, not yet. Okay, now. Okay. All right. So let's. Get that screw to depth. This is on the right side. So we've got good position, four, five, partial reduction of the spondy. All right, we're good to go. So now we've got our screws done. Let's go to fast attack to me for inner body phase the next phase of the IMAS protocol. Uh, I use Williams Microdisc Retractor. Simple, it's easy. Um, obviously tubes are a thing. Um, I come in and out with my, my retractors quite a bit from the different phases and it's easier to just come in and out with a simple Microdisc Retractor of any type, depending on how much room you decide you need for adequate pedicle to pedicle exposure. Any given moment in time, I'm really managing one pedicle to the next on one side. I don't, uh, so I have a very specific retraction goal. I don't retract the whole wound at all times. It's very, very deliberate as to where I'm tracking, retracting and why. So in this case, we're L45 left interpedicular space. We've got the high L4 screw confirmed fluoroscopically there. We'll go down here, and that's going to be the low screw right there. So there's the uh, L5 screw left right there. Pretty sure that's visible within the field. I'm approaching my laminotomy defect medially from lateral to medial. So I'm going to keep assessing that. I still have bone here. So this is a big cleft within the facet itself. So again, screw, screw, midline. And that's my entire zone. I've got zip codes one, two, three, 
four, five, six, Central Canal seven, oriented to all of the expectations we would have in any of those zip codes of this left L45 interpredicular space. So I think taking this, this very predictable, repetitive, redundant, segmental inner space and conforming it into very specific zip codes and zones, both in horizontal plane and in, in vertical plane, really gives us a different perspective of the nuances and subtleties of what you expect to find in different pathological states and whether it be a disc or synovial cyst or ligament or facet or fractured SAP with uh, impingement on the, uh, L in this case, L4 dorsal root ganglia. There are all sorts of things that we see pathologically that are much more specific than just L4-5. So I always try to be really mindful of where I am in the interpredicular segment relative to the zip codes so that my expectations are consistent and congruent with what I'm seeing as I go. No matter what, that mindfulness really helps confidence, accuracy, speed, ultimately safety, and always clinical outcome. So yeah, big, big cleft here in the left four or five facet complex. So, you know, using the AP, looking at the medial pedicle wall of L5, I've got about five millimeters there. So here's pedicle. So I, this is gonna be my A-hole roughly, assuming I'm at superior end plate view, which I am. So I'm gonna go, as always, A-hole up to B-hole and kind of mature that. And then go lateral, inferiorly from the A-hole. And then trapezoidal cut, superior roof. We'll amputate the, the very prominent posterior facet at the same time as we deliver that. And then we'll do an oblique roof that'll be roughly parallel to where we expect that L4 nerve root to go. And so, again, uh, coming vertically, three zones. You know, the high zone is facet zone. Deep zone is the uh, foraminal zone. Final zone is the disc space zone. Uh, as we get to foraminal zone, that's where we run the risk of fecal sac and or nerve root. So, you know, that's the breaking zone. The set zone, if you're lateral to the medial limit, is a, is a full throttle zone. So just, it, it takes uh, extreme clarity of awareness and being comfortable with where you are to know the difference between a breaking zone and a, and a full throttle zone. But again, these are all tricks of spatial orientation that really help you get more efficient at this kind of procedure. A little bit of a synovial cyst there. Let's see how I'm doing relative to superior end plate L5. I'm good. You know, as always, uh, I want to be flush to the high pedicle so that none of my instruments are deviated towards that higher nerve root in the foraminal zone. As we get to that cortical bone low, I'm gonna mature that bone resection to get down to disc space. So as you can see, I'm entering into the foraminal zone there um, predictably. So let's open up that deep bone. There's a, little piece of migratory facet right here. I'll try to remove that because I don't want that to be inadvertently driven up towards that nerve root. We have a straight pituitary though. Four. Mm -hmm. uh, get in there. As I look here, you can see I'm in lateral flora, a little below the posterior line, but I'm a little lateral to this bone resection, so I'm going to continue that bone work more medially. That'll get us up to the top of the cliff, so I won't be overhanging the lateral disc. That medial facet is loose as well. So. Okay, so let's look here. All right, so I'm right at the posterior 
longitudinal line right in our set defect. So I'm going to put this large straight zero curette there. Wayne's going to simulate. I definitely have four twitches, right? No relaxants? No. Okay, thank you. All right. So I'm going to do a nice gentle entry into the disk space and just make a little defect there. Simulate one more time. All right, good. So we'll go ahead and enter the disk space of four or five all the way down to the ventral disk space. And then we'll continue to manipulate this. You know, this is going to be a gentle progression of, of uh, relaxation of the disk and mobilization of the segment. Um, creating a nice defect within the disk space. So every successive tool is going to be a little bit easier to find that little hole. And it's a progressive path of least resistance. All right. So definitely already a little mobile, so I'm getting some heightening. We go straight box curette. Okay, same area, Wayne stimulate. No like, conductivity, so I'm good. Nice, gentle entry, everything quiet. Yeah. All right, we'll rotate, cross midline, and dive with the plane up. And then, once again, start clearing out this path, this tunnel, which is the uh, progressive path of least resistance that ultimately the template and then the implant's going to find. So this early step really sets your accuracy and your angles and your expectations. And um, I don't like to take instruments in and out, in and out, in and out. I try to finish each step with each instrument. For this phase, I've already got a path of least resistance. I'm going to take the retractor out. I'm just going to let this find the hole. See how it found the divot on lateral flora? So I'm gently going to just turn that corner Get across midline. Feel until I rough it. I don't want to gouge the end plate. The bone quality is excellent. Take it past the 50 yard line to the ventral disc. Um, this is a high box cut. All right. Found the hole easily, so my pathway into the disc is, is clear. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, again, just feel like I'm scraping off the end plate, but not gouging at all. All right, we'll go hockey stick. This will be left-handed hockey stick, bone rasp. All right, you can really see... I'm mobilizing that L4 vertebral body a little bit here. I'm going to start with a 9. Let's try that. Let's rasp that up. We'll go uh, right-handed hockey stick. Finds the hole. Crosses passively on its own. Again. And again, you know, we haven't even started with the hardest part of the case, the most important part the uh, direct decompression. We're still focused now after screw placement on the indirect decompression. Again, the value of indirect first is uh, ultimately when you get to direct, you've already got the value and the benefit of indirect before you dive in to do a precise micro decompression directly. So. Next size. Gold paddle shaver. All right, one bigger. There's still more movement to get. Yeah, and you know, you see again, you see how these tools just find that hole if you're precise early. So it's really important in this kind of flow state to be really crystal clear on your early accuracy because it pays dividends, not only 
in this situation with this human, but in every subsequent situation where you just get very, very intuitive as to where you are at all times because of the repetition and, and the process and the benefits of the process. So this is a nine. All right. All right, so we take this tapered tip, steerable template. We gently deliver it down to our, our hole, our breech in the posterior disc space. Still quiet there, quiet. Let's uh, go ahead here and we're gonna go assess this now. Okay, let's see where we are. Let's see how we are relative to midline. Okay, we're going to go to AP floral. Peggy, could you move that screen over just a little bit? Yeah, move that slightly there. So we've got a nice placement right there of that L4-5 inner body. So that looks good. Let's come back in with lateral flora. Again, you know, the benefits of a steerable banana cage coming in from posterior T-lift are obvious. You know, you get all the benefits of an X-lift or a lateral approach, transoas approach, without any of the isolationist strategy of a lateral approach. I mean, we have posterior midline exposure. We have posterior decompression options. We have our stabilization option. We have a great large size lateral inner body kind of footprint and all through one very small but powerful incision. All right, let's um, go to an 11. Uh, yeah. Now the sizing is kind of arbitrary. That came out pretty easily, you know, so if it comes out, not super easy, but pretty easy, I'll go up two millimeters. If it comes out pretty hard, but, but smoothly, I'll go one millimeter. If I have a hard time getting it out, I'll keep it the same size as the template. Got our allograft inserted into the cage. Go ahead, Wade, one more time. Let's get an AP. Get another uh, drape. Just pretty simple process going it to AP just to confirm placement. All 
All right, that looks good. So I'm going to just simply remove that. So I've got a nice uh, placement of cage right there. L4-5. So good. So we're done with the inner body phase of the case. Now we'll move on to the most important, most critical, most relevant part of the case, which is a well done microsurgical decompression. Left 4 5 to 5 1, cross midline internal laminectomy, right L4 5. You know, again, you know, I, one of the things I like to highlight and state the obvious on is, you know, we're not rushing. It's just very methodical, very predictive, very algebraic and algorithmic, you know, we're done with the screws, we're done with the inner body, and relatively short period of time, very little drama, very little stress, the value of being investing in accuracy early in those two very rhythmic, predictive, very geometric steps of the case. The custom, the art, the craft happens right now. And you want that other stuff to be the easy part. And I hope we were able to reflect yet again that it is predictive, it is easy. And now we can really get our mind in the right place to do a very thorough, very well done decompression. Okay, I can hold this there. My, my perspective, got my facet zone, I've got a little bit of medial facet here, there's the disc space view, there's the cage down there, there's the uh, L5 screw back here, you can see that L5 screw left, I'm going to go to the medial pedicle, carefully from lateral to medial, knowing that, you know, particularly when I do a decompression, I take all the bone right up to the pedicle on that frame, and so um, it's going to be a nerve root and dura pretty close to that medial border. And again, as I go medially, it will elevate. But there's going to be, because of her slight keloid tendency, a little more fibrosis and scar tissue here than normal. Let's take our time through that. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to spend a little bit of time investing in complete dissection find my borders, find my bone margins, know where I'm safe. If I look AP up by that L5, L4 screw high, I still have bone up there. I can be a little more aggressive there. This is where it gets crowded right here. visual obscurity when I clean up that approach angle. Here's the screw, so I'm down into the 5-1 zone here.
a little irritable as I get deep, so I'm getting close. Um, so starting already starting my breaking zone. Still lateral to medial. Okay. I know the most severe tightness is four or five left. And it's going to be under that medial facet. So we're going to go from lateral to medial through the facet to that nerve root zone. I'm pretty, you know, deliberate with the drill. I use deliberate rather than aggressive, meaning I trust the tip of the drill, the uh, AM8 equivalent acorn. Um, to find that nerve root and decompress it without having to put a kerosen under it until I've really decorticated and removed that bone and that compression. So we'll uh, come up lateral to medial. Continue to think of this as a lateral to medial approach, knowing there's a lot of dorsal midline scar. No need to engage the scar. We're reconstructing this person, so we can easily take the facet all the way to soft tissue. Um, part of it is visual, part of it is feel. Uh, I usually feel before I see. You know, so it's very much important to paint and wand, not plunge. There's no gouging. Just gentle, gentle painting. You know, again, always thinking about the uh, concept, where are you within the bone? Are you in the external cortical layer, the deep internal cancellous layer, or ultimately the innermost deep cortical layer? And as you start to perceive cortical bone, like I am right here, you know you're close. On that internal surface of that lamina. No, no task is without opportunity for improved mindfulness of where you are. And I'm starting to get to that extreme soft tissue medial. This is, uh, you know, protected fecal sac right now because I haven't violated that lateral ligament yet. There's a little zone for entry right at that mid facet. We'll go kerosene three, and then and just gradually. You notice I'm going high towards the foramen. I want to get a nice, relatively less severe zone done first, so I can approach it from above understanding the planes better. All right, so now I'm gonna go for a slightly more oblique trajectory of my uh, visualization, knowing that I'm getting down to Dura. I'm close, I feel it, I don't see it yet. Just because you don't see it doesn't mean you shouldn't be aware that it's right there. So this high lamina, which is abutting the uh, laminotomy defect, I'm starting to get drill into. I 
Still got some opportunity for soft tissue clearance. So I've got a nice superior laminar interface coming up to this dorsal spinous process. So it gives me the roof of the previous exposure. And here's the floor down here. So let's go drill. I like to invest early, you know, this preparation, the slowdown that I'm doing right now really safely accelerates things once I'm ready. You know, no matter what fundamentals of uh, understanding where you are, you can see the dural margin right here coming to that bone there. So, and that's where I am fluoroscopically height wise. So we'll come to the under base of the dorsal spinous process and the base of that lamina. And I'm going to use the intact lamina to find where the internal laminectomy is going to be as I approach the dura from that area. Because ultimately, we're going to have a silhouette of where the dura is going, and that's going to dictate our depth in the more obscured scarred in areas. So here's a little bit, I'm gonna get that proximal stuff out of the way. Okay, really close, I'm on cortical bone, high dorsal lamina, getting down to ligament here. Okay, see that interface right there, using the drill physically to just release that a little bit. Obviously, uh, when I use the drill as a tool, I'm pretty mindful of where my foot is and what I'm doing there. Okay, so we're just getting our dorsal exposure superiorly all the way to ligament here, internal cortical bone. That's going to set us up for that internal laminectomy and broad dural exposure. All right, so here we go. Let's get our focus in play. Okay, three person. Go up over the midline. Now, I like to leave the ligament intact as long as I can. It's a safety layer. Now I, I got it to the top of the ligament attachment, so it just released a little bit. So you can start to see more uh, of the dura that's not scarred in high in there. But as we can see that it is still adherent, so memo to self, be careful on the uh, peeling. All right, so now that I know where the dorsal fecal sac is, I'm going to do a more deliberate soft tissue dissection and get the entire base of dorsal spinous process. I know I'm not going to hit dorsal fecal sac here. Follow that bone here, follow it up here. Again, here's the Fecal sac down there. So let's uh, create that plane and develop it at, a, at an altitude that won't get you into that sac. 
So that's dorsal midline right there. Still got some soft tissue in the way. All right, let's see if I can do this. Starting to fog up a little bit. As you start developing the base of the dorsal spinous process for the internal laminectomy, it gets easier and easier to see across midline. At the beginning, it feels like, wow, how am I ever going to get there? But, but that's why you've got to get all the, uh, all the roof of that visual plane dissected. So there's nothing obscuring your high visual viewpoint. So, and just have the confidence that you're heading the right direction on the downslope of the contralateral lamina. Alright. Okay, three kerosene. Here's that contralateral zone. Here's the ligament here. Hey, Julia, if you want to see the, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't, you're, are you watching that monitor over there? Okay, you're fine. Good, thank you. Don't want to be careful there. It feels pretty tight at the lateral thecal sac margin to the right sided ligament. Um, let me have uh, Murphy. There's dura on the right side. This is all hypertrophic ligament here on the right side. I'll go uh, lateral fluoro. You can see where I am. That's right side. That's over the top of the dural margin right here. So we're making good progress relative to left-right exposure. I'm going to get a little bit more low. You know, the key here is orientation. And um, again, that's where headless screws in place, very distinct decompression zones, geometric removal of bone, very, very clear and established boundaries give you, you know, a broad three dimensional perspective that allow you to know in an otherwise small hole, you know, exactly where you are with confidence and clarity. Which is kind of the point of surgery, right? So, yeah, anatomy first. All right. Go drill here. The base of left side dorsal spinous process. We're going to continue to extend that medial facetectomy to the right side. Again, we see the ligament there. Okay, left three kerosene. I need to.
definitely a lot of adhesive scarring here. I've got to be a little careful. So again, I'm, I've got dorsal fecal sac right here. I've got descending stenosis right here. I'm approaching the high right L5 lamina, which I can feel right about there. So I want to basically, understanding that the dura is, is down there, I want to clean up all that soft tissue scar up here. This part I'm just going to be super careful because this is where it's scarred in most to the dura, particularly towards this left side. A Murphy ball sector. that bone. <coughs> See if we can get below the majority of the decompression zone and approach that confluence from above and below despite a small approach. So I'm getting down to intercortical bone yet again. Have a left kerosene. Okay. Yeah, there's a the gap right there. All right. 
see if I can get under there. Okay. Got into a clean plane here below on the right side, so that's a little bit of a, a movement for freedom. Contralateral, that gives me a much better exposure of that right side. Get rid of some of that scar and ligament. five lamina, right side, go on the ventral part of it, leave the dorsal arch, preserve the dorsal interspinous ligaments always, still get thorough, adequate bilateral, extreme lateral decompression. Left. Closer to the L5 foramen on the right. And I'll validate that in a minute. I'm just going to clean this up a little bit more at the junctional zone right below the disc space right there. That shelf is always there. And it's variable. Some people have a really steep, shallow shelf. Some people have a nice, big, generous hole there. But that's a real common site for recurrent residual L5 verdict. So I always am pretty aware of that shelf. Okay. And again, I like to focus on the contralateral, the, the right side first, just because it's a little awkward, it's a little harder as you mature through the sequence and and then your your final exit zone is your most important zone and and that's where I want to be present as we uh, start finishing this up most all right let me have uh, there's the lateral L5 nerve root right there and let me prove that Okay, so here's the lateral sleeve, there's the medial pedicle, and there's the foramen there. If you look how I'm diving out the foramen below, the pedicle's right here of right L5, and yet we still have dorsal spinous bone all the way up here. We have fecal sac here. You can see dura all the way to here. So I am all the way down to the top of the right L5S1 disc space over the right fecal sac. And we'll go up this way. Let me, so I'm all the way to the top of the four or five disc space on the right. And I can see the lateral fecal sac here. So there's no residual compression. The disc space is right there and you can see that. So right side looks good. So let's focus left. The last phase, the most guard in phase. All right. Okay, there's all five screw there. So have this scar here. Let me go. And just continue to clean up some of that scar.
from the pedicle, lateral to medial. Again, leaving all that stuff early gives me more of a safe, natural approach angle and plane. So I'm getting to the defect right there. All right, let me go uh, drill. Still at the inferior pedicle right there. So I've got bone right here. That edge is big enough to get under. Okay, that's lateral nerve root, lateral fecal sac. The pedicle area of L5 left. I'm going to connect the dots from the prefrontal frontal junction, the keyhole at 5-1 to the disc space. Four or five. Let's see if we can just progressively decrease the lateral recessiveness here. Don't want to pull too hard because of how densely adherent it is to the dura. Okay, so again on lateral floor, I can see my pedicle zone is here to here, um, which fluoroscopically is there. So. If we know L5 is diving out here, let me take a little more bone here to get to the keyhole. Medial pedicle is right here. I know I've got a screw here, so I've got plenty of room. I don't have to worry about getting into that screw placement. round out that superior medial pedicle and get into that L5 descending tunnel right here. All right, right there. And there. Our goal is to get this woman straight again, have her walk straight, have her heel and get back to her very active enjoyable lifestyle. So details count. All right. There's the uh, proximal L5 foramen. That's rounded out to the pedicle right there. And the majority of her radicular symptoms are L5, so Naturally, we want to make sure this is as good as it can be. We've already done the majority of the lateral recess at the 4-5 space, minus that scar, which I haven't decided how aggressive I'll be on yet. See how that framing feels. All right, here's L5. It's pretty wide open. And then when we go up here, we know that this is medial pedicle, and I've drilled it all down. Here's lateral fecal sac boundary. On the left side, I'm above the disc space. So we know those um, images we saw pre up um, have been accounted for at least relative to the harder tissue. Still got all this. Uh, and again, this space is here. 
We have a straight pituitary. Now, as you can see, I mean, I personally, uh, you know, I said it before, the easy part of the case is done. This is the hardest part of advanced segmental reconstructive spine surgery is just, you know, doing thorough, adequate, safe, minimally invasive decompressions. And um, so it's a huge advantage to making the other stuff easy. So we're cleaning out the disc space at 4.5 behind where we put our T-lift. So that alleviates some of the ventral compression. We go uh, up by them. I don't know how uh, aggressive I want to be with this scar. I've got dural margin here. I've got a little bit right here that bugs me because it feels like calcified. It feels like there might be a piece of facet there, but it is super, super stuck. Let me uh, play with it a little bit. Let me try that and let me tease it a little. You see how much uh, torque there is on the sack with any manipulation. I know there's no direct mass effect, but if I can get it debulked, reduces questions if there are residual symptoms later. But obviously, it's not worth creating a problem for. There's a nice plane under the dural margin. As we get superior, it gets a little more clear. But it's all connected, though. Still a piece of uh, the set complex right here at DL4 for him, and so I'm gonna invest in that real quick. That zone feels. Yeah. Almost done. All right. So here's L4 nerve root right there. So I'm out that foraminal segment on lateral flora. We'll go up along the junctional zone towards 3-4, but I don't need to go to 3-4. 3-4 itself was fine. The real goal is to get a sense of lateral fecal sac, scar, <laughs> disc space, medial to the pedicle, down to the descending L5 foramen, which, you know, minus all this stuff we've got, this is just not coming easily. 
right here. How about a kerosene again? No, it's really stuck here. Really just a little residual right there, so. Nice if I could get in that plane right there. Number four pencil. Uh, so that's lateral fecal sac stuck. That's pretty severely stuck. I'm going to call it um, point of diminishing returns and heightened risk. I completely decompressed in the lateral recess, so I'm good. Um, let me have Rima. We'll go to uh, reaming the head. Basically done with this. And ream the head. Five left. Um, Four left, go to uh, caps. Do left L4 cap. And now um, rod. First, all right, let's do that side. Irrigation. High assembly. All right, so we'll get that secure. I'm going to tighten the bottom and we'll compress it. Our chopstick compressor. So this is the chopstick compressor. It goes on the rod under the top head, bringing the driver through it directly in, and then loosen the top, gentle squeeze, and close, and tighten. Let me secure it, make sure that's completely tight. Skipped. Okay, we're good. That's left four five. 
All right, let's go right. There you go, high L4. Okay. Okay. Come out, Lynn. In the middle of the go in between and decorticate real quick. I'm not for set. Bone uh, drill. All right, Rod. All right. Go ahead and drop this first cap. Not, nothing to it. Secure it till it's tight. Let's drop for a second. Got our nice, uh, we go, change gloves. Already decorticated right interparticular facet. Let me go uh, hydrogen peroxide, uh, bacitracin blend. So, did our registration, we did our uh, screw placement first, that's detected me for inner body, nice indirect decompression, reduction of scoli, re restoration of significant lordosis, um, significant height, 11 millimeter T lift, K, T -lift cage, um, bilateral decompression, L45 down to L5S1. 
with uh, really no encroachment on the L5 nerve root on either side, ultimately. Definitely a lot of scar, definitely a lot of fibrosis, but all the bony wall peripherally is gone. Feel like we hit all our marks, checked all our boxes, and uh, I think we're done with this small, predictable episode of care. Focus on the important part, the recovery, and ultimately the restoration of performance, which is why minimally invasive surgery is so important. It's not about the technique, it's not about the film, it's about minimizing collateral damage and trauma so we can get people back to who they want to be when they grow up. So. All right, go here, put this in the inner particular space, a little more. All right, got it, scope out. All right, let's get a couple of images, our final shots. Save that. Let's go AP. Yeah, back at you. All right. Save that. Out. And we're all good. All right, everybody. Thank you for joining us this morning. I hope this was informative. Uh, definitely got to deal with a, a lot of common situations here. So have a great rest of your week.